Should I upgrade my old Mac or should I buy myself a brand new Mac? And that's a question that we commonly get asked on our service desk. So we thought to ourselves, let's do a face off. Hey, this is Rod from Ram City, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. We're gonna be taking this uh, oldish MacBook Pro. So this is the 2012 model 13 inch MacBook Pro. And you can actually still buy this model brand new from the Apple store. And it's the only MacBook Pro that is still fully upgradable. So you can upgrade it with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can upgrade it up to whatever the maximum size SSD is, which at the moment is two terabytes. And it's got a Core i5 2.5 gigahertz processor. We're gonna compare that to this Mac here, which is actually my work Mac, so I use it for work. Um, and it's got a 15 inch retina screen. It's got a 250 gigabyte PCIe SSD and it comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM on board. Now it's not upgradable at all. I can't even buy a larger um, SSD, but it is a pretty good machine. And I wanted to compare the difference uh, in performance with the old Mac and the new one and then upgrade the old one and see how that compares in performance to the new one. Have a look at how much it costs for each one and then give you a bit of an idea of whether it's worthwhile upgrading an old machine um, versus you know the cost of actually buying a brand new one. I'm just gonna see how quickly each one boots up to the logon screen and we'll time it. Ready, one, two, go. And they're off and racing. Right, so this one's done. The old 13 inch MacBook Pro is still chugging along. Takes a while. Well, it's amazing how much faster that computer booted up. Okay, so that one's done. All right, so there's a big difference, obviously, in boot up performance between the two. Okay, so on our old Mac, we're just gonna run Geekbench first, run the benchmarks there. Same on the new Mac. Okay, so that's our Geekbench done, and you can see on the old Mac, in its original specification, we've got a single core CPU score of 2513 compared to 2961 on the new Mac. Uh, on the new Mac, the multi-core score is far superior with that i7 processor, and the uh, so it's 10903 and then 5315 on the old Mac. Uh, what's interesting is the memory performance on the old Mac is actually superior to the memory performance on the new Mac. Don't know why, it's same speed memory, 1600 megahertz. Interesting to see how that changes as we increase the RAM that's in the old Mac because it's only currently got four gigabytes of RAM. So what we're gonna do now is upgrade the RAM in the old Mac and we're gonna run these benchmarks again and to see how much they've moved and then we'll go ahead and do an SSD upgrade and we'll see what the final results are. Okay, so that's our RAM upgrade installed. I've booted the machine up. Now I haven't put all the screws back in because I'm going to take the case off again in a sec to put the SSD in. So we'll log the machine in, we'll run the benchmarks again, we'll see if there's any difference. There's a slight change in the memory performance, but it's pretty much the same before. And the thing about when you upgrade the memory is that the, um, the difference isn't really that noticeable in a benchmark program. The difference comes when you're using applications that use lots of RAM. So uh, if you've got a limited amount of RAM installed, you'll see some big improvements in the amount of time it takes to boot the machine up, the amount of time it takes to open applications, and the performance of the applications themselves. So what I'm going to do now is run a Blackmagic disk speed test on both machines. And... Wow. Okay, so basically on your old machine with a hard drive, you're looking at around about 95 to 98 megabytes per second read and write. Now on the 2014 Retina MacBook Pro, you've got read speeds uh, that are around about 700 megabytes per second, which is what I'd expect from a mediocre performance PCIe SSD. And the write speeds aren't all that great actually, only about 400 megabytes per second. So I think we can get pretty close to that when we upgrade the old Mac to a SSD as well. So 
So now that I've installed the SSD, I'm gonna run that boot up test again. We'll just see how long it takes to boot the machine up. So it's now been upgraded with 16 gigabytes of RAM, same as the new Mac, and it's now got a 250 gigabyte MX200 SSD. Okay, now it's ready to go. So before and after, the boot up time, so you can see the difference there. So here's a quick tip if you've noticed that the boot up speed isn't quite what you're expecting on your Mac after installing the SSD. And I had the same issue. If you go into the system preferences and select startup disk, you just need to authenticate as an administrator to make changes here. And you simply select the startup disk. Uh, previously, one was kind of ghosted out. And you click on restart, and then just click restart again. And for me, my machine was booting, it took about 45 seconds. And after I did this, it only took about 17 seconds. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna run the Blackmagic speed test on this machine again, now that it's been upgraded. And we're gonna compare that to the old machine. Here we go. stop that there. So pretty impressive. So the write speeds on the upgraded 13 inch MacBook Pro are now superior to the write speeds that I'm getting from the, the newer uh, 2014 MacBook Pro with the PCIe SSD. So about 470 megabytes per second write, about 507 megabytes per second read compared to 397 write, about 700 odd. So far superior read speeds, as you'd expect from a PCI SSD on the newer Mac. You can see that it's made a really big improvement in performance on this old machine. So the final thing to consider is, is it worth doing that kind of an upgrade? So uh, what we've done with this old machine, just to recap, is we've gone from four gigabytes of RAM to 16 gigabytes, and we've gone from a 500 gigabyte hard disk drive to a 256 gigabyte SSD. So I was hardly using any of the storage space on the hard drive, so I've opted for a uh, lower capacity SSD. So in terms of costs, I've got them written over in my whiteboard. Uh, I've got $139 for the RAM upgrade, so that's to go from four to 16 gigs. So 16 gigabytes RAM, I've kept the, I've got the two, two gigabyte modules that I can use in something else. And I've also upgraded the 500 gigabyte hard drive to a 250 gigabyte Crucial MX200, which is the um, higher performing uh, SSD from Crucial. It's not the least expensive one. It's more like mid-range performance. And that's 156. So a ca you might want to get a cloning cable, which is about 42. So just off the top of my head, so you've got 140, 156, you've got about 296. So, you know, a little less than $300 for an upgrade for RAM and a hard drive in this machine. So in terms of the original cost of these systems, so the 2012 model, $1,310. That one cost, I bought it refurbished from the uh, Apple store in the middle of 2015. Now I also bought this machine, which is a 2015 Retina MacBook Pro from the Apple store, also refurbished in mid 2015, and that was $2,120. So it's quite a difference in price. Now the upgrade on this one was $300. I've shown you the benchmarks, the difference in the boot up times. I'd like to know what you think about this. Is it worthwhile upgrading the old machine? Is it better to buy a new machine? Drop a comment below. Um, we've got new content coming in on our channel regularly, so hop over there and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.